New binders? Uh, not quite yet, Your Honor, but soon. <laughs> uh, not quite yet, but soon. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin by uh, asking some questions from the defendant's binders. Good afternoon, Mr. Blankenhorn. Good afternoon. Um, would you turn to uh, tab 16 in your binder? And this was one of the documents that indicated that you had relied on. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And... Mr. Cooper directed your attention on the first page to a quotation where it said, children who grow up in a household with only one biological parent are worse off on average than children who grow up in a household with both of their biological parents. Recall that? Sir. Uh, now, there are a number of questions I want to ask you about that. but. Did you understand the authors here to be asserting that the fact that there was only one biological uh, parent was causally related to the fact that the children um, uh, were less well off? Yes, sir. That was my understanding. It is my understanding. That is your understanding? Yes, sir. Now, did you read this entire chapter? I read the entire book. Um, let me see if you remember reading the very next page. Uh, the first full paragraph. But our single motherhood and father absence, therefore the root cause of child poverty, school failure, and juvenile delinquency. Our findings lead us to say no. While living with just one parent increases the risk of each of these negative outcomes, it is not the only or even the major cause of them. Do you recall reading that? I do. Um, now, you referred a number of times in your testimony to biological parents. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. And you were not meaning to imply, were you, that biological parents were any better parents than adoptive parents? No, sir. In fact, the studies show that all other things being equal, two adoptive parents raising a child from birth will do as well as two biological parents raising a child from birth, correct? No, sir, that's incorrect. Well, sir, um, may I say a, another word on that, please? Um, uh, you'll have an opportunity okay. on redirect. Um, I, it was a clarifying thing. It actually supports something you just said. The studies show that um, uh, Adoptive parents, because of the rigorous screening process that uh, they undertake before becoming adoptive parents, actually on some uh, outcomes uh, outstrip the biological parents in terms of providing uh, pr a protective uh, care for their children. Yes, I was going to come to that. Um, and I appreciate your getting there. Um, and. Um, uh, in addition, um, your Institute for American Values uh, publishes something called the Marriage Index, correct? Yes, sir. And um, let me um, ask that you be handed Plaintiff's Exhibit 2880. I don't, didn't have this in the volume because I didn't know it was going to come up. We were more perceptive than I thought.
document you recognize. Is that correct, sir? I'm sorry. Uh, I 2880. 2880, thank you. Twenty-eight eighty. Sorry, I just. Oh, here, here it is. Yes, sir, I have it. And and you recognize that? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor, I would offer plaintiff's exhibit twenty-eight eighty. Very well, twenty-eight eighty is in. And uh, when. Your Institute for American Values does its its analyses. It treats adoptive parents and biological parents together, correct? I did not do the research for this uh, particular study, but it is, uh, I would not at all be surprised if for the purposes of this report, uh, we followed what is a common practice among scholars in the field and lumped those two categories together for the purposes of this study. If you want to compare outcomes for children in, uh, who are adopted to outcomes to children in other family forms, you really have to do a, sp a study on that specific issue, and that is not what this was. But the answer to your question is I wouldn't be at all surprised if we did not follow the customary, a very common uh, custom among researchers who for a number of reasons, including practical, very practical ones, often tend to include um, uh, uh, in the, uh, they, they clump them together in the way that you said. Let me be sure I understand what you're saying. Ordinarily, uh, researchers um, include adoptive parents um, in the same category as biological parents. Is that what you said? No, sir. Okay. Let me try it again. Um, uh, in the research that you're familiar with, um, uh, do researchers ordinarily include both biological parents and adoptive parents in the same category? It, it depends on the question they're seeking to, to answer. The, 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 it depends on what they're studying. That may, well, um, I'm sorry. That's the that's really the determinative factor. If let if, me let me let me jump right to the bottom line. Okay, good. sir. Um, are you aware of any studies? And let's just talk about gay and lesbian couples. Let's just jump right to the bottom line. Are you aware of any studies showing that children raised from birth by a gay or lesbian couple? have worse outcomes than children raised from birth by two biological parents? No, sir. Okay. Would it be okay to, for me to say additional? It would not be okay for you to volunteer anything. I heard your the speech that ended, and I'm really trying to move along. Okay, sir? You will have a chance to make speeches when your counsel is asking your questions. Okay. Um, let me um, uh, follow up on a question that your counsel did ask, uh, which was about domestic partnerships. And I want to be sure I have your testimony. You thought a lot about domestic partnerships in recent years, correct? I, my testimony was that I... Uh, had not thought very much at all about them and had given really no uh, serious consideration to them until I was kind of publicly challenged to do so in uh, uh, 2007 in an exchange with Jonathan Rausch. And that, as you, I'm you, sure you heard me say, this whole thing, that's what happened. Um, does that mean that the answer is that since 2007 you've given a lot of thought to it? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and um, is it your view that domestic partnerships contribute to the deinstitutionalization de of marriage? And I'd like you to begin with a yes, no, or I don't know. 
Mr. Boies, I know the answer to your question. Well, then, but then, then I, I like cannot you. answer it if the only choices you're going to give me are the choices between the words yes and no. Oh, no, I, it wasn't only between yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gave me three. You, you gave me three. I don't know yes or no. I do know. Okay. But I that, cannot that, give you an accurate answer to the question if the only words I'm allowed to choose from are yes and no. Listen to the question, okay? I've heard every word of it. Okay, what is the question? You ask me if I had a view on this subject. You asked me if you, you were asking me to uh, state my opinion on this. What I asked you was whether it was your view that domestic partnerships contributed to the deinstitutionalization of marriage. My answer to your question is that I believe that they could do so, and an additional part of my answer is I believe that that risk is worth I didn't ask you whether the risk was worth it or not. Then I, I, asked tell you, you. I asked you whether you had a view I do. as to whether domestic partnerships increased the deinstitutionalization deinstitu of marriage. And you said they could. That's what you told me, right? I said I thought it was possible or likely that they would. Okay, now, possible and likely are two different um, well, maybe Damage. we could rerun the tape and find out what I actually said. I think I maybe used the word that it was possible, but I can't recall the exact word I used a moment ago. Well, let's try to get what your view is, regardless of what you said before. Um, in your view, do domestic partnerships increase the deinstitutionalization of marriage? I believe that it's possible that they could do so. Okay. Now, when you say it's possible, obviously anything is possible. Do you believe it is likely that they do so? I believe that those domestic partnerships sure, provisions... I, I, I've got to ask you. I mean, this is going to move along a lot faster if you at least begin with a yes, no, or I don't know. I, I cannot do that on this because the, sure. there are this different domestic question. partnerships. I have to be able to say what kind of domestic partnerships we're talking about. Mr. Uh, Blankenhorn, uh, counsel is entitled to an answer to his question. May I ask that's, a question? That's how this process okay. works. There's a question, it, and then there's an answer. And the answer has to respond to the question. He mean domestic partnerships that are open to opposite sex couples or not? Um, uh, let me take them one at a time, okay? Um, uh, and I may take it one in three times. Um, first, do you believe that domestic partnerships that are open to opposite sex couples increase the deinstitutionalization of marriage? I believe that they would be likely to do so. Do you believe that domestic partnerships that are not open to opposite sex couples will increase the deinstitutionalization of marriage? I believe they would be dramatically less likely to do so. Less, I want to know whether you think they will be likely to do so or not. Even though they may be less likely, will they nevertheless be likely to do so? I don't know. Okay. Uh, do you believe that domestic partnerships that are open to different sex couples only when one of the participants is over 62, um, uh, which happens to be the law in California as I understand it, um, increases the deinstitutionalization of marriage? My answer is the same as I just said. I believe they would be significantly less likely to do so. 
Um, now, you believe that uh, gays and lesbians uh, today are raising children, correct? Of course. Yes. And um, in fact, hundreds of thousands of children are being raised by gay and lesbian couples, correct? I don't know how many. <clears throat> Ever try to find out? I did. And were you able to make an approximation? I was. Yes, sir, I was. What was that approximation? I, I can't recall. Well, approximately. No, sir. Um, uh, and you recognize that in some cases, the gay and lesbian couples are raising a child that is the biological child of one of the parents, and in some cases they are raising adopted children, correct? Those would be two, uh, two of, of course, they would be, those would be examples of, of those would be examples of children in gay and lesbian homes, yes. Yes. And you believe that permitting gay and lesbian couples to marry would significantly advantage the gays and lesbians themselves and the children that they're raising, correct, sir? When you say advantage, do you mean improve the well-being of? Yes. Uh, my answer to your question is that I believe that adopting same-sex marriage would be likely to improve the well-being of gay and lesbian households and their children. Now, um, reminder number one, um, we have a copy of your uh, book, that is and it's exhibit 956 I do not have a copy with me here if that if you were addressing a question to me um, no I think it's in the binder I believe uh, Mr. Blankenhorn binder we handed up to you the binder that you handed me? Yes. The binder that your counsel handed you only had the cover page. Yes. We have handed you a binder that, unless we have screwed it up in some way, um, ought to have the entire book in it. Okay. Or well, at least if you tell me the number, I'll, I'll track 956, it down. 956. Defendant's 956. Yes, it's an excerpt. It's not the entire book, but it is uh, more, more pages than just the cover page. 956. Got it. Okay. Um, Pretty short excerpt. Well, it's it, it is uh, it's not the whole book, but it's longer than just the cover page. Um, would you turn to page two of the book? Yes, sir. Um, and the um, the last two sentences. Um, um, and for context, you may want to read earlier in the paragraph. Um, you'll see that you're writing there um, uh, on the issue of same-sex marriage. Is this profound principle of equal dignity the heart of the matter? After all, part of the reason why the principle is so revolutionary is that it can grow and deepen over time. Groups that had long been considered effectively outside its moral reach. African Americans, women, people of certain colors or languages or religions can over time and often as a res result of great struggle enter into its protective sphere. And then you get to the two sentences that I want to particularly direct your attention to. You say, I believe that today the principle of equal human dignity must apply to gay and lesbian persons. Do you see that? Yes, sir. And the I there is you, correct? That's correct. And you say, in that sentence, in that sense, insofar as we are a nation founded on this principle, we would be more 
emphasize more American on the day we permitted same-sex marriage than we were on the day before. And you wrote those book, those words, did you not, sir? I wrote, the, wrote those words. And you believed them then, correct? That's correct. And you believe them now, correct? That's correct. Let me um, direct your attention to some of the scholars that you say you relied on. And Mr. Cooper took you through a, um, a number of publications uh, by a number of scholars, and you indicated that you had relied on what they had written. Do you recall that? I do recall. Now, um, were any of the scholars that you and Mr. Cooper identified scholars who have asserted that permitting same-sex marriage would cause a reduction in heterosexual marriage? don't understand the question, I'll well, try to make it clear. I, I, no, I do understand it, and I'm... May, may I s say it back to you and see if I've got it? I think you're asking me, did any of the scholars that I have cited, do they believe that adopting same-sex marriage would lower the marriage rate among heterosexuals? Uh, almost, and... Um, and I, I, I just want to clarify one thing. Um, you said believe, and I said assert it. And I'm not asking you to try to probe their minds. I'm simply asking what they have said and written. Do you understand the difference what I'm saying? Yes. And, and what I'm asking you is whether any of these scholars that you've relied on have asserted that permitting same-sex marriage would result in a lower rate of heterosexual marriage. I, I think the safest answer would for me to be say, I don't know, but if you'll also permit me, I think, I believe the answer is yes, some of them have in this. I, in that case, what I would now do I, is ask you which ones. Well, uh, I thought you might. <laughs> That's why I was kind of careful in walking into it. But um, <laughs> it comes from those discussions. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Professor Norval Glenn, in his article called the, Strug called the Struggle for Same-Sex Marriage, I... I have not reread that article in some time, but I know he is a long time. Uh, I, I've read many things of his, and I've, I've he's a. I, I know him, and I believe that he has voiced reservations of, about same-sex marriage along the lines of the statement that I read it, from in the article. That is, that he's saying that if. Sir. Yes. Um, I, I, I need to have you focus relatively precisely, if, if I can, on my question. You did read a, uh, or Mr. Cooper read to you, a portion from Mr. Glenn's article where he was talking about the deinstitutionalization of marriage. And, and I do remember that, okay? My question is different, okay? My question is whether Mr. Glenn or any scholar that you relied on, has asserted that permitting same-sex marriage will result in a lower rate of heterosexual marriage. The problem here, I'm, I'm not uh, trying you, to be the, evasive, but you must let me just say my answer, which is that if they're arguing no, 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 that sir, the I problem... Don't have to, I, I don't have to do this, because all that's going to happen is you're going to say something 
that I'm going to have to follow up, okay? And what I'm trying to do is this is a very simple question, all right? It is not simple to me. All right. Well, let me try to make it simple. If you're asking me to use the exact simple. form let of words. To... Don't argue with one another. Let's just have a question and an answer. <laughs> <laughs> let me try to make the question as simple as I can. Have any of the scholars that you have said you relied on said in words or in substance, okay, that permitting same-sex marriage will cause a reduction in heterosexual marriage? That's yes, no, or I don't know. Know the answer. I cannot answer you accurately if the only words I'm allowed to choose from is yes or no. I can no. give you my answer very briefly in one sentence. No, if you know the answer, why don't you share it with us? I would be happy to, but he is only permitting me to give yes and no, and I cannot do that and be See, accurate. He's giving you three choices. Uh, yes, no, I don't know. But I do know. I do know the answer. Well, then is it yes or is it no? <laughs> Your Honor, I can answer the question, but I cannot give an accurate answer if the only two choices I have are yes and no. I, if you give me a sentence, I can answer it. One sentence is all I'm asking for. Let's take a sentence. A sentence. One it, sentence. Yeah. Can you tell, ask me the question again, please? <laughs> yes. Yes. Have any of the scholars you say you relied on asserted, written, that they believe that permitting same-sex marriage will result in a reduction in the heterosexual marriage rate? My answer is that I believe that some of the scholars I have cited have asserted that permitting same-sex marriage would contribute to the deinstitutionalization of marriage. One of the answer, one of the manifestations of which would be a lower marriage rate among heterosexuals. But I do not have sure knowledge that in the exact form of words you are asking me for, they have made the direct assertion that permitting same-sex marriage would directly lower the marriage rate among heterosexuals. Mr. Blankenthorn, Mr. Blanken, Blankenhorn, Horn. Blankenhorn. Um, uh, it's not wasn't so long. <sighs> Questions and answers. If I were um, to take that as an I don't know, would that be fair? With respect, Your Honor, I would s disagree with you. I know exactly my answer to this question, and I have just stated it, and I'd be happy to restate it. Records clear on what you said. Um, and, and, and let me let me try to see if I can um, I can clarify what you meant. Um, you have said that some of these scholars have said that permitting same-sex marriage would lead to the deinstitutionalization of marriage. Um, you have then said that the deinstitutionalization of marriage would lead or might lead to reduced heterosexual marriage rates. You said that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what I am asking you is whether the linkage that says deinstitutionalization of marriage leads to lower heterosexual marriage rates is something that the scholars said or is that something that you are saying? Scholars. Okay. Now, what scholars have said that the deinstitutionalization of marriage will lead to lower heterosexual divorce rates. What scholars? I think you mean to say marriage rates. Marriage rates. Would you like me to name one? I would like you to name every one that you know. 
Okay, I will. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to take me a moment to compose my uh, memory here, but let's start with. And, uh, let's be sure we know that we know the the question. The question is, which of the scholars that you have said to Mr. Cooper that you rely on are scholars who have written one that permitting same-sex marriage leads to the deinstitutionalization of marriage and two that that deinstitutionalization of marriage leads to a lower rate of heterosexual marriage. Do you have the question clear? I thought you were asking me to name scholars on whom I relied to form my opinions. I did not know that you were asking me to restrict it to the few that were enumerated in, in the colloquy with uh, Mr. Cooper. I thought you were asking me, am I aware of scholars who make this claim? If you're asking me to choose among the few scholars that were involved in the earlier colloquy, my answer would be that I, to the best of my knowledge, Professor Glenn has argued that permitting same-sex marriage would lead, would likely lead to the further deinstitutionalization of marriage. I'm not saying he used those exact form of words, but I'm saying the substance of his arguments, written arguments, have been such. And I'm saying that in addition to that, Professor Glenn has uh, uh, argued that the deinstitutionalization of marriage has a manifestation of lower participation rates of heterosexuals in marriage. I'm saying that Professor Norval Glenn is one such person among the very small number that were cited in this, that that's the universe you're limiting me to. I'm saying that to the best of my knowledge, the answer to your question is Professor Norval Glenn. And, um, I'll also add that he's one of the most distinguished family scholars in the nation. Anybody other than uh, Professor Glenn, among the scholars that you told Mr. Cooper that you were relying on, anybody else? In informing my views on this subject, Mr. My views Mr. are not restricted Mr. to the please. few that are on this list. Your Honor, could I please? If you want to know this who I rely simple, on, this is a simple question. I'm happy to tell you. He identified several scholars that he said to Mr. Cooper he relied on. These were illustrative only. I accept that it's your testimony that these are illustrative only. I have others that you would be pleased to know their pedigree, and I'd be happy to give them to you. I think Mr. Boyce is asking for their names. Yes. Professor David Papineau from Rutgers University would be another one. Okay, now, and this is somebody who has written that the permitting same-sex marriage leads to the... the institutionalization of marriage and that that in turn leads to lower heterosexual marriage rates, correct? Well, my only hesitation in answering yes is that I have not refreshed myself on his exact writings in whether the form of words are close enough to satisfy your concerns, but it's my belief, based on an extensive acquaintance with his books and writings in recent years, that those represent the substance of his beliefs. And I, I, I can't sit here right now without reference to his works to, to prove it in an exact word formulation. So I want to issue that caveat, but I believe if he were here right now, sitting here, and you ask him, I believe he would say, yes, those are my beliefs. Okay. Now, Mr. Blankenhorn, I'm, I, I want to try to make as clear to you as I possibly can that my questions here are asking about what these people have written. <coughs> Not what you think they would say if we brought them in to testify. Not what you think is in their heart or mind based on your conversations with them. 
but what they have actually written. Do you understand the difference? Of course I do. Okay. So, focusing on that, and I'm afraid I'm going to mispronounce David's last name. Could you give that thing to me again? Papano? Papano. Um, it is your testimony that Mr. Papano, Professor Papano, may or may not have actually written something in which he said, A, permitting same-sex marriage leads to the deinstitutionalization of marriage, and B, the deinstitutionalization of marriage leads to a lower rate of heterosexual marriages. Correct? I know that he did, has written... I'm trying to answer your question. You know, it's an important issue, and I'm trying to give you a short but clear answer. You answered the questions that I'm actually posing. I am oh. doing so to the very best of my ability. Uh, I came all the way here from New York to answer your questions absolutely to the best of my ability. Um. And my answer is that I believe that Professor... P I know certainly that he has written that the deinstitutionalization of marriage would lead to would likely lead to lower rates of marriage among heterosexuals i believe but i am not certain that he has written that same sex marriage would likely contribute to deinstitutionalization okay um now um while while we were uh while we were talking uh, i was trying to read through uh, norval glens um, article that you have here, um, and um, and while I haven't maybe read it as carefully as I uh, would like, I don't see anything in here in which he talks about heterosexual marriage rates. Do you recall anything in here about heterosexual marriage rates? I was relying for that statement on a paper that he. Uh, wrote uh, several years ago that I was involved in, that's why I can remember it, uh, where he was a co-author of a paper that talked extensively about deinstitutionalization and he, and in that paper of which he was a co-author it specifically talked about lowering marriage rates as a likely consequence. Uh, and, and was that uh, paper that you just referred to one of the documents that you relied on in your expert report? I, I don't recall now whether it Why was... Why don't you look? Mark your... Um, By the way, I, I did not... I never... Maybe I misunderstood something, but it never occurred to me that everything I would say regarding my views had to be... Uh, uh, represented in, in the list of documents. I've been studying this topic for more than 20 years and I certainly am relying on Find many, it. many more things other than the few things in this uh, report. The question is whether or not this is reflected in your expert report. Let's, let's, well, it's reflected in the sense that this was a, a thing that, I, that influenced my thinking, but I'll, let's answer the question of whether it is listed and let's... You listed the things you considered and relied on, correct? That's what you were asked to do. Maybe right? I made a mistake, but I certainly never occurred to me that all of the views that I expressed had to be traceable to one of those documents at the end of this report. If, if, that had, if I had understood that that was the requirement, there would have been many, many scores more documents cited. They would have gone back for 20 years of the work and study and reflection that I have done on this issue. Mr. Blankenhorn, Mr. Blankenhorn, Mr. Blankenhorn, um, I, I apologize. Uh, Let's find out if it's listed. That would solve the whole problem. That, that would, uh, although I even regardless of whether it's listed or not, I do want to follow up on something you just said.
No, sir, it is not listed. And now, um, uh, at the end of your expert report, you prepared an index of materials considered, correct? That's the list I was just looking over to see if I could find Norval Glenn's article. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't there, correct? No, sir. Uh, not, I, I did not find it upon reading it quickly. Um, I, I don't find it either. There is a uh, Norval Glenn article, but it's a different article, correct? Well, that's correct. It's a different article. Um, now, uh, maybe, the, maybe the easiest way for me to approach this is to go through the materials that you went through with Mr. Cooper. Um, and I'll try to go through them as quickly as I can. Um, turn to tab three. The, the in, mine? In, in your book, yes, yes sir. Book. Got it. And um, this is an excerpt from uh, a book by Suzanne G. Fraser, correct? Yes, sir. Now, does Dr. Fraser assert that permitting same-sex marriage will cause a reduction in heterosexual marriage rates? I do not know of her having made such an assertion. Okay. Does Professor Fraser assert that permitting same-sex marriage will result in an increase in heterosexual divorce rates? In the interest of moving along, I think I can say that I do not know of any statement about same-sex marriage that Suzanne Fraser has made. Uh, I don't know of any comment that she has made on that topic. Okay. Um, let's go to the next um, expert that you told Mr. Cooper you relied on, uh, tab number four. Uh, Professor Quayle, the book, A History of Marriage Systems. Um, does Professor Quayle assert anywhere here that Permitting same-sex marriage will cause a reduction in heterosexual marriage rates? My, my answer is the same. I'm not aware of Professor Quayle uh, having, in this book, made any comments at one way or the other about this was, was 1988, and it would have been highly unlikely for her or anyone to be writing about it. Uh, but I, no, the answer is no. I do not know of anything she has said in this book or elsewhere on the subject of same-sex marriage. I'm not aware of anything. Um, uh, did um, Professor Quayle um, assert that uh, deinstitutionalization of marriage, however it was caused, would result in a reduction in heterosexual marriage rates? No, sir, no, nor was I relying upon her uh, to... to Talk about deinstitutionalization. She, she's under the section under what is marriage, not about what is same-sex marriage, and not as what is the theory of deinstitutionalization. If you want to talk about sources for my views on deinstitutionalization, I can save you some time and take you right to them. But no, she does not in this book discuss same-sex marriage, and to the best of my knowledge, she doesn't say use the term deinstitutionalization. She's a historian, and deinstitutionalization is a term that comes from sociology. So uh, maybe we can maybe we can move this along. Um, uh, neither Professor Fraser, nor Professor Quayle, nor Professor Kingsley Davis. Um, nor the Committee of the Royal Anthropological Institute of Great Britain and Ireland, um, uh, uh, nor 
uh, Professor Vanderbur, um, nor Professor Malinowski. None of them talk about, insofar as you were relying on them, talk about same-sex marriage or talk about the deinstitutionalization of marriage. Correct? That, that would not be correct. Okay. Um, it, it didn't work to speed it up. Um, it, May it, I? Uh, it, 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 was, it was a compound question, but I thought... Uh, Mr. Boyes? Let me I, do it my way. Let me I was trying to way. save us some time. I, I was too, but... Um, um, first, Professor Fraser. Professor Fraser does not deal with deinstitutionalization of marriage, does not deal with same-sex marriage at all, correct? Nor was I relying upon her for any of my views on those subjects. The answer is no, she doesn't. The answer is yes, she doesn't. Yes, she does not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And um, Professor Quayle. Does, Same. Pro does Professor Quayle deal at all with deinstitutionalization of marriage or with same-sex marriage? Not to my knowledge, no, sir. Okay. Um, Professor Kingsley Davis. Does Professor Davis deal at all with same-sex marriage or the deinstitutionalization of marriage? Yes, sir. Based on my memory, uh, I am confident, well, I, I would say that based on my memory of his writings, that he does speak either with specific use of the word deinstitutionalization because he is a sociologist or making the same uh, argument. So my best Mr. understanding Mr. is that he does speak about that issue in his work. Okay. Now, you see... Um, if you begin with a yes, no, or I don't know answer. Well, now we're back to the same old problem. Then, well, but, but um, uh, you got to the yes at the end of that long speech. And, and what I'm trying to do... It wasn't a very long speech. Well, let's not argue about that. It will be here okay. too long. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to... I get to ask the questions. You get to answer them. That's what they tell um, me. And... Um, and I get to choose what questions I ask. And my questions are designed to be precise questions so that I get a yes or no answer. Or you can say, I don't know. No, sir. I, uh, often the questions are not amenable to those three choices. I often know the answer that I wish to give. I can give it briefly, <laughs> but I cannot give the answer sometimes if the only words I'm allowed to choose from are yes or no. But, but when I ask a question like, does Mr. Kingsley Davis, does Professor Kingsley Davis address the issue of deinstitutionalization de or the issue of same-sex marriage? You can answer that question, yes or no. Can you not, sir? That is not the question you just asked, but the qu if you want to ask yes, it that, that way, the is answer is yes. Okay, good. Now, does he do so in the article that you say you relied on? I don't know. Ha! See, I did it. That's good. <laughs> good for you. Yes. And, and if I could give you a gold star, I would. But, that, but that's when the answer really was I don't know. Right. Now... Does he do so in any material that you indicated that you had considered in your expert report? Well, see, now we're back to the problem of what's in the expert report. I've read a lot of stuff by him, and I believe that he does talk about it, but I'm, let's go back and look at the list. I can tell you that I've relied upon his uh, work well, in forming my views. Why you answer the question? I'm just asking. I, I, I'll have to read the list in order to tell you whether uh, any other article please is Please do so, and when list, you finish, let me know. There. I will.
My quick reading shows me that there are no other sites to Davis other than the one we're, we're discussing. Okay. Um, now, if you turn to tab six, the notes and, in, and queries and anthropology by the Committee of the Royal Anthropological Institute of Great Britain and Ireland. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, and um, uh, does this uh, publication address, as you recall, um, either the issue of same-sex marriage or the issue of the deinstitutionalization of marriage? I know for a fact that it does not discuss the issue of same-sex marriage ex with using th that term same-sex marriage. It does not. Ex it, do they do it does not. But it is my belief that it does, in specifically or in a f in substance, discuss the process of deinstitutionalization. Find where it does so. Well, I only have a few pages here. If you could give me the book, I could. Uh, I believe I could find it for you. Let me get that. At the, let, me, let me get that while we're uh, going on to other questions. Um, uh, and the next question is at tab seven. Professor Vanderbeer um, was another expert that you said you relied on. Correct. I relied on these views about the definition of marriage, not about deinstitutionalization or same-sex marriage. I've tried to make this clear. Uh, that's actually what I'm trying to make clear also. And um, uh, in fact, one of the things I'm trying to make clear is that these people that you spent your time on direct examination uh, testifying that you relied on don't talk about in these materials same-sex marriage or the deinstitutionalization marriage. I'm trying to make that point. And I'm s agreeing with you by and large in telling you that their area of study by is large marriage. Part. It's the by and large part. Well, we've yeah. already found Kingsley Davis talking about deinstitutionalization and a couple of these others. Wait a minute. Where do we find Kingsley Davis talking about that? I think wasn't my uh, testimony before that I thought Kingsley Davis in his work was uh, does discuss the process of deinstitutionalization? Yes, you said you thought that was so, but it wasn't in the um, materials that were in your book. Oh, well, and if it we're wasn't back to any, that, it, then let me finish at least. And it wasn't in the uh, materials that were listed in your report, correct, sir? The only article by Kingsley... That, that, that is a yes or no answer, sir. I believe... If you're asking me, was was Your anything Honor, else by Kingsley yes Davis? Answer to this question. We have the question in mind. No, I don't, Your Honor. Okay. And perhaps you could read. Okay. Hate it. Okay. Um, to the extent that Professor Davis addressed the issue of deinstitutionalization of marriage, he did so outside of the publication that was in your book and outside of anything that is listed in your expert report. Correct? No, sir. I believe that it is certainly true that it's outside anything listed in this report. I, I can't. And it's also outside the uh, publication from Professor Davis that is in your book. I, I, do, I can't recall the ways in which I did or didn't use Professor Davis's work in my book. Uh, I've no, not in your book. I, I apologize. Uh, I think I created this confusion. You're thinking about your book being one of your books like The Future of Marriage, right? Yes, sir. I apologize. Uh, I was uh, meaning to refer to the uh, binder that you used with your company. Then, then, then the answer is yes. It is not. Your, your statement is correct. Um, the... Um, now, uh, Professor uh, Malinowski um, uh, would it be accurate to say that in the publication that is in the binder that you were using with your counsel, that you said that you relied on, that 
Professor Malinowski does not deal either with same-sex marriage or with the deinstitutionalization of marriage. That would not be correct. That would not be correct. Okay. Um, does Professor Malinowski in this uh, book uh, deal with same-sex marriage? No, sir. Okay. Not t no, sir. Okay. Uh, does he deal with the subject of the deinstitutionalization of marriage? I don't think he uses the word, but I'm pretty confident that, well, I know in his writings as a whole, he talks about the process of, of deinstitutionalization. Say his writings as a whole. You mean writings other than what's here in your binder? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I may, you may not have understood the question, but the question was, in the materials that you told your counsel that you relied on and that are in your binder, in those materials, does Professor Malinowski deal at all with the subject of the deinstitutionalization of marriage? I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, tab 10. <coughs> Professor Levi Strauss. I think I can save time by saying that he does not talk about same-sex marriage, and I don't know whether in this particular writing he deals with the process of the deinstitutionalization of marriage. Okay, that does speed along. Um, do you have any materials that you have listed uh, as materials considered or relied on in your expert report from Professor Levi Strauss other than this publication? I'm quite confident that I have not included anything other than this one-sided article. Okay. Um, I've read his work extensively, and they've been very important influences on my views, but the only thing listed here is this one, one piece. Okay. Now, uh, tab 11, Law Commission of Canada. Um, this does deal with same-sex marriage, correct? It does, yes. Not only, but it does not deal only, with it. Not only. Not only. Um, uh, uh, does the Law Commission of Canada um, assert in the materials that you have here before you that you say you relied on that same-sex marriage may result in a reduction in heterosexual marriage rates? I'm, I don't know. Um, does the Law Commission of Canada, in the materials that you have in front of you that you say you relied on, assert that permitting same-sex marriage may cause an increase in heterosexual divorce rates? My strong suspicion is that they did not because they are endorsing same-sex marriage, and they are endorsing what I would view to be the radical deinstitutionalization of marriage in general. So it would be my supposition, without having reread the entire document recently, but it would be my very strong speculation that they made no such statement in this document. And um, did the Law Commission of Canada, in the materials that you have in front of you, and that you say you relied on, assert that permitting same-sex marriage uh, might lead to a trend towards polygamy? That is yes, no, or I don't know. I believe they endorse, Honor, at least indirectly... Your Honor, could I... This really is a question that can be answered yes, no, or I don't know. It just depends on if you want to know what I think about it. <laughs> well, that's the next question, perhaps, and a question that Mr. Cooper can can pursue. But uh, Mr. Okay, Blaise, I don't do know. It. I don't know whether okay. they said that same-sex marriage would lead or could lead to polygamy. Okay. Um, and again, um, 
did the Law Commission of Canada and the materials that you have in front of you that you say you relied on assert that permitting same-sex marriage might cause an increase in children raised outside of marriage? Again, yes, no, or I don't know. They're strongly advocating for the trend, so I don't think that they Your would Honor, have... Your Honor, this, he, he keeps... I wonder, in view of the hour, whether a good night's sleep might be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, might that not be I think helpful in moving us along? I think it might. I, I hope it will. All right. Now, um, is there a realistic possibility that we could conclude the presentation of evidence sometime in the morning, sometime before noon? <clears throat> Just confer with counsel. Sure. I, I think um, uh, this is the last witness. There may be some short uh, documentary evidence to come in, uh, but I think that um, there is a um, there is a hope, um, and I will try to sharpen my questions. And perhaps um, the witness can think about sharpening his answers. And if we work together, uh, we may be able to get it done. Very well. Let me ask Mr. Cooper: Are you planning to present Mr. Schubert as a witness? No, Your Honor, not if we can work this, uh, these document issues out, which we think we can. Very well. So then uh, we should be able to conclude the presentation of evidence with uh, Mr. Blankenhorn and then any documentary evidence that you want to put in. Is that what I understand Mr. Boyce to be saying? All right. Well, I'll look forward to it, and that should enable us to conclude sometime before noon. Is that correct? Do you agree, Mr. Cooper? I, I do agree with that, yes. All right. Very starting, well. Starting at 8.30 again tomorrow morning, Your Honor. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Have a pleasant evening. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor.